Michael here with Mass Tactical. I get asked a lot of questions about my film gear and the types of equipment that I use in the field and how I carry it, the editing programs that I use. You know, I just get asked a lot of questions about how I actually produce the content that you guys see here on YouTube. And I figured what better way than to, to, to tell everybody instead of answering every individual question, I figured I would just do a breakdown video on my entire kit, the way I carry it, the methodology behind it, and give you guys some awesome links to great deals on all of this gear. If you're interested in becoming a creator, if you're just interested in videos in general, or you know, photography, or making any kind of video, uh, you know, I'm going to provide you guys pretty much all the information that you need to obtain the type of gear that you need to get the kind of quality production that you're looking for. So with that being said, don't go anywhere guys, we're going to break down my kit. So let's talk about this case for a second. The case that I use is the Pelican 1520 and this thing is pretty much a tank when it comes to keeping your gear safe. If you know anything about Pelican products, you know that they're the highest quality cases that you can really even buy on the market. I got this case, they hooked us up from Atlantic Tactical Supply and uh, you know I needed this case here recently to house all my camera gear and Atlantic Tactical Supply hooked me up. So be sure to go check out AtlanticTacticalSupply.com and check out their wide variety of high quality tactical gear. They're not your average tactical retailer. So, you know, they've got a lot of things that most people don't, and if they don't have it, if you email them, they will get it for you. They have a bunch of different connections with different distributors, and if they don't have it, they can probably get it. So. Let's go ahead and talk about some of the gear that I've got in this box. So I, I use two different tripods. The one that I'm actually shooting on right now, I've got my camera set up on it right now, is a Monfrotto. And it's got a swivel head up top, so you can pretty much get any, any angle that you want to. It's a really high quality uh, tripod. I'll get you guys some more pictures of that later on. But this right here is another little tripod that I use called a Joby Gorilla Pod. And this is a really unique uh, versatile tripod that you can use because it's of course bendy and you can take this and wrap it around a tree if you wanted to it'll help you get you know an good angles on unstable surfaces so you can do a lot with this Joby Gorilla Pod right here it is a little on the expensive side for how for the size that it is but for the functionality it's a really good tripod to get and you can also use it and hold it out and get further extension you know if you don't have a good wide angle lens or something like that you might want to use something like this that way you can you can take it and angle it like this and then bend it out and stretch it out and then you would be able to get good angles uh, for any kind of selfie based uh, videography you know if you're a vlogger or anything like that or maybe whenever I'm out scaling a mountain I might just pop this out you know and, and give you guys some commentary as I'm going up the mountain or something like that so it's uh, a really awesome tripod to have and it mounts right here on top of my other tripod whenever everything's in here my, my standard tripod that I use is 18 inches wide which is the pretty much the exact width of the interior of this case if you'll notice here I actually had to cut the sides out of this uh, this pick and pluck foam here because the foam actually has about an inch and a half uh, thickness of a border all the way around it that doesn't actually have the pick and pluck material so you don't they, they put that there specifically so you've got the proper padding that you need for all your gear so I actually had to take a knife and cut the sides of that out to get all the way out to the sidewalls for my tripod to fit just snug right in there so it fits perfectly and that's why I went with this case I measured it out before I bought it and then the, the Joby Gorilla Pod just sits right on top of it whenever it's in here so some other things that you'll notice that are missing right now is my camera which is what I'm shooting on and the microphone that it goes on top of it. The microphone is a Rode shotgun mic and it actually comes with the camera. The camera setup is called a Video Creators Kit and this particular kit is the Canon Rebel T6i which is what I'm shooting on right now. There's a bunch of different kits and obviously a bunch of different cameras but if you want to get similar quality and sound to what I'm getting right now in comparison to, to a lot of my other videos you know you can go with a setup like this. It's actually affordable and it gives you really high quality production. So that goes right there. Right here I keep 
spare batteries. I've got two spare battery slots. I've only got two batteries for my Canon T6i right now because the OEM batteries for this thing are like 60 bucks a piece. Um, so you can get a little expensive there. But uh, So I got one in my camera right now and then I've got a slot right here for another one. Uh, and I've also got more room to add more as I get more. Um, so uh, Canon extra batteries. And then I've also got extra batteries for my GoPro right here. Two of them. And then I also have one inside the GoPro and the GoPro itself right here. This GoPro is a Hero 4 Silver. And it is the one with the LCD screen on the back. So it gives you a lot of versatility as far as an action camera goes. Usually whenever you're working with cameras that are this small, you don't get the uh, benefit of having a screen back here to frame your shots. And that's why I went with the Hill Hero 4 Silver versus the Black because the Black doesn't actually come with the LCD screen as well as a lot of the other versions don't have the LCD screen. So that was a must for me. So that goes right down in there. Right back up here, I've got a... Uh, uh, the charger for my Canon. Uh, I keep that with me uh, and I, I do that because you know you never know where I'm going to be and where I can pop in and get a quick charge for a second. I always try to keep my batteries charged. Over here on this side is the Dark Energy Poseidon. This is a battery bank, a portable battery bank, and it's made for like long-term usage in the field. Um, it was pretty much designed for people who go out on long-term hunting trips and you know you need to stay charged when you're out in the field you need to keep your GPS is charged you need to keep your cameras and your phones and all your electronics charged and essentially this is the tool for the job this dark energy Poseidon holds about a week's worth of energy for all of your gear I can essentially charge my phone anywhere from four to six times with this thing I can charge my GoPro three to four times I can charge my camera batteries I can charge pretty much anything that I need to charge with this dark energy Poseidon. It comes with a paracord wrapped charging cable here. This is a USB and it's uh, pretty much made for like Android phones and things like that uh, if you wanted to use this particular cable. However, if you wanted to, to charge like an iPhone, you, you'll need to bring your lightning cable with it. Uh, but this uh, the Dark Ener Energy Poseidon is actually indestructible. This thing can be submerged in water. It can be shot with a shotgun, thrown off of a mountain, and this thing will survive. I can promise you that. Um, but this is not a review on the actual Poseidon itself, so I'm going to go ahead and put that back, and we'll talk about that in the review coming later this month. It's got a lot of awesome features, and I can't wait to show it to you guys. Right here, I keep the uh, little carabiner and uh, lanyard that it comes with. So that's all revolved around that dark energy Poseidon there. Back up to the front here, this is just a large cutout that I put in here uh, to house a bunch of my random GoPro supplies that are really awkwardly shaped. And it's just a lot of small things, so I figured it'd be best to just cut a big hole. So right here I've got the uh, housing, the standard housing for the GoPro. It's got the cutaway window in the back so you can retain a little bit of audio if you wanted to. Um, but it also comes with, uh, of course, you know, your waterproof uh, gate. And it comes with um, a, a solid gate, too. This one has just got a, like a little clear plastic thing. And this one is actually solid plastic. This one's more like a, uh, like a film. Um, so you get different, different housings. I've also got the uh, chesty mounting harness. You just wrap this around and it mounts to your chest. Uh, this here, I forget the actual name of this. I'll find it and put it in the description. Uh, but this is kind of similar to the Joby Gorilla Pod that I talked about just a second ago, but it's for the GoPro. So you just take this clamp and clamp it to a table or clamp it to a tree limb or something like that. And you can snake this thing around and angle your GoPro however you need to do it. So that's a really cool mounting feature there. I uh, got the USB charging cable for the GoPro, of course. Uh, this here is a hat clip, so I can just clip this onto my hat and run with it. Uh, you'll need, you know, the minimalistic housing for the GoPro to do that effectively, otherwise it'll be too heavy. Uh, and then the last mounting option that I have here is the head mount. Uh, so you can throw this on over your hat or just over your head itself, mount your GoPro right there, and then you can go at it from there. Uh, the last piece in here is just the uh, micro SD card housing uh, for the GoPro. You've got to have that so you can process your footage. Uh, and then the last little thing that I've done here to the case is taking my knife 
And if you'll notice right here, there's three SD cards. This is going into the actual border that I talked about that doesn't have the pick and pluck foam. So I took my knife and just cut three little slits right here to put some extra SD cards. So again, you can never have enough batteries and SD cards when you're going out in the field, especially when you're going out for long-term training. Um, so you want to be able to stay charged. You want to have all the SD space that you can. That way you can keep filming and uh, you know film all the way home if you need to. So when it comes to actually editing my videos and getting them up online, I use two different programs. Right now I'm using iMovie for the bulk of my video processing, but for all the little pop-up animations that you guys see, like the lower third that'll come up down here and say the title of the movie and it animates in and out and everything like that, uh, all that fancy animation based stuff is done in Adobe After Effects. So, uh, you know, Adobe After Effects is a really complex program and it's not really made for, you know, average everyday video makers. Uh, but for the people that are serious about their video production, you know, you might want to consider Adobe After Effects for a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, and you can even fully edit all your video in Adobe After Effects. I like the simplicity and the speed that I can get with iMovie. I can pump out videos and render them out a lot faster than I can uh, in Adobe After Effects. So I tend to just do my animations in After Effects and then I'll bring them in and import them into iMovie and further process my videos down from there. You know, I find that people don't really care as much about all the flashy transitions and, and tons of Hollywood production when it comes to uh, YouTube videos. I tend to go a, a little bit above and beyond the average creator and, and add in a little extra flash for you guys every now and then. But for the most part, it's simple transitions, it's speed, it's more about your ability to tell a story and capture the audience and retain the audience. When it comes to creating videos on YouTube, you've got about 10 to 20 seconds to capture the watcher's attention right off the bat. You have to sell them on staying for the rest of your video. So that's unfortunately where a lot of people fail. You know, if you look back at a lot of my earlier videos, you guys can see a big difference in the quality of what I used to do in, in today's quality. My speech has gotten better, my overall video quality has gotten better, my sound has gotten better, and that's primarily to getting more advanced equipment as I grow, but also from analyzing the way that I do things over time, you know, go back and watch your videos and see where you're, you know, what kind of words that you're using. You know, I, I like to say, uh, a lot, and you guys probably know that. You know, there's some videos that I have where I've said, uh, over 250 times, so, um, you know, I just did it again. So th there's things that you've got to pick up on about your speech and things that you do. Uh, you know, maybe you, your mannerisms, or uh, you might think they're a little weird, or somebody might think they're weird. So you got to correct yourself as you create videos and learn from your mistakes. That way you can get better. Um, you know, structuring the video. Sometimes you guys will notice that I'll put my intros right in the front of the video. It just depends on the content and what I'm trying to do. Sometimes I'll wait till about 20 or 30 seconds in. This video is a good example of that. I waited, you know, I captured your attention right up front and then I waited to show you guys my actual intro. So there's things that you need to do and things that you can experiment with whenever you're creating video to, uh, to get better and uh, retain the audience's attention. Right now my, my uh, average view duration is around 7 minutes and 30 seconds which is a few minutes ahead of what most big time creators actually even get. So that just goes to show you when you start focusing on the things that really make a video great, you know, telling a story being able to capture the audience, having good perspectives, angles, and lightings, you know, switching things up. You guys will notice, you know, a lot whenever I'm walking through the woods, I'll get like three or four different angles of me walking through the woods. Those are the things that you got to do. It's a little annoying. It takes more time, but you know, at the end of the day, if you want to be a quality video creator, you want a chance of making this an actual job for you, you've got to invest in going the distance. You got to do more than what everybody else is doing, right? And especially when you're in this industry and everybody and their grandmother makes video, tactical videos, gear reviews, training videos, and things like that, I've got a lot of competition. So that means I have to go the distance and stand out amongst all the rest. And I think that our, our channel growth here recently is a prime example of uh, of that working. So um, if anybody's got any questions about this gear at all or any more of my processes, my methods, anything like that, I'm happy to answer anything. I would love to help you guys. Uh, and also, if you if you do like this video and you like the kind of content that I put out and, and what we do here at Mask, uh, you know, 
and you want to get this kind of gear, be sure to check out our Amazon Outpost in the links below. I'll, I'll be giving you guys individual links to all this gear that I have so you can pick it up and you can start creating on your own too. Um, so, and, and again, that, that'll help our channel grow because we get affiliate commissions for that kind of stuff. Um, so, you know, if you want to support us, buy through our links, check out our website, get signed up as an official Warrior Tribe member today. Pick up a t-shirt, pick up a hat, pick up a patch decals we got new black decals hitting the store uh, this week um, so you know if anybody's got any questions once again please remember to comment like subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video see ya in memory practice preparation situational awareness is the perception of environmental elements with respect to time or space the comprehension of their meaning and the projection of their status after some variable has changed such as time or a predetermined event